Hello everybody, Chaz Large here with another Fix It video for you. On the bench today we have a Sharp DV NC65 uh, VHS cassette recorder and DVD recorder. So um, basically it allows you to make copies of VHS onto DVDs etc. Um, it was shipped in to me um, by the customer and unfortunately he when he packed it, he packed it with the mains plug on the top and consequently as you can see uh, there's a whacking great big dent in the lid so I thought right I better check this out so I started to undo the screws and I thought no hang on let's record this for posterity so we can see exactly if anything has been damaged under here to be honest I don't think there will be any damage I've undone the four side screws that, that's when I decided to actually video so I've just got to take the three more screws that are in the back now apparently the fault is that the DVD side of the things works fine. Um, it's just the VHS side of things um, with a bad picture. So I haven't done any any kind of testing yet. Didn't want to do that until I'd um, checked out this big dent on the top. Hopefully we can smooth it out. Um, I've taken photographs of it before I did anything else. So I can send to the customer and say, look, this is your crap packing. Um, I will try and flatten that dent out if I can um, it shouldn't be too difficult anyway oh yes right so we can see straight away that the top uh, cassette housing bar has been bent um, before we even do anything more can we take that off it's usually with these plastic housings is like just a few clips to undo the metalwork side of things um, maybe we can just pull it up let's just give it a gentle ease up and if we don't get it right we can always take it off and whack it with a hammer to flatten it out yeah that seems to have brought it back up okay so uh, theory should be that we can plug it in and it may do a little reset jiggery pokery it's coming up with sharp on the display we turn it eject uh, turn it on the display lights up and we've even got a, a dvd in there customers left a dvd in there that's very nice of them let's just eject that and see what's written on it uh 12 years a slave fruit veil vale station mandela La lone walk to freedom oh it could be quite interesting it's a, this looks absolutely crappy so whether it'll even play back or not i don't know there's a big splodge of something on there let's just give it a a wipe whenever you're um cleaning discs um with a lint-free cloth always just wipe it in in lines going from the middle outwards uh, because uh cds dvds whatever they should cope with scratches in a radial uh, pattern uh, because they can jump over those but if the scratches are longitudinal along the tracks of the disc um, then uh, they won't cope very well so i may need to just sort of put a little bit of cleaning fluid on there but anyway we'll put that to one side and protect that and we'll get a vhs test tape out so this is all before we've actually connected it to a tv let's just see if it will take the tape in and it will and it threads it up and it begins to play oh squealy squealy that sounds like excessive back tension to me Let's just have a little look at the heads. The heads look a little bit dirty and there's something on the drum. So let's just have a little look at that. Let's show you that before we do anything else. I'll use a pencil because it's least damaged, but there is like a little smear of something and I can actually feel that it's like a something has been on there and 
around that head there can you just see to the left of it there's like a little black mark that i would guess and there's also one there this is carbon that's come off of the the actual tape and there's another bit there so this head drum really does need cleaning so let's uh pause it there for a minute whilst i um connect up the tv and get that ready okay well i've connected up uh, the video to my tv set which sits behind <laughs> my computer there uh, unfortunately my video capture uh, usb capture device won't work it connects windows says it's there but obs can't see it for some reason anyway so i've had to revert resort back to an old um, webcam that balanced on the corner right? so you can just see a bit of the screen but anyway it's better than nothing you can at least you can see um that there is uh, something happening so if i can move the controls up and down here you can see on the tv that it's working so anyway there we go so let's uh we're put it into uh, vcr mode and press play so the tape is loading and playing now let's ex exit the menu where do we do vcr menu press that so it's showing SP as though it's playing, but there's no sound or vision. So I'm guessing that the heads are very dirty. So that's what I'm going to do. The first little job I think I'm going to do, let's eject that, make sure the eject works. Oh, that, <laughs> that opens that. That's the eject. So uh, I did try the customer's DVD and that didn't play, so we'll get to that bit later on so cleaning of the heads let's go there uh, cleaning of the heads involves very very carefully for those of you who have never worked on vcrs and you might get one uh, come through let's just focus all right we'll start so basically video uh, cleaning the video heads involves cleaning the heads which are these parts on the drum the little ceramic um, record heads only a, about a millimeter in y, uh, height and a, about three or four millimeters wide uh, and they can pick up as you can see that that black uh, streaks around the side of the drum there you can see some there and um, where are we we saw some more earlier on um, yeah just on the edge there uh, there's black streaks which is probably uh, from the actual tapes themselves losing the oxide off the tapes so what i've always tended to use and have done for many years is a little um chamois swab on the end of a little piece of plastic you used to be able to buy these bucket loads of these and i had loads and loads and loads and can't get them anymore i can't seem to find them so if anybody knows where we can still get chamois cleaning sticks um, because I've searched and I just can't seem to find them. Um, this is my last one, so I'm having to be very careful about this. Uh, but the way to use this, uh, there's two ways to use it. You can either use it dry, which has a degree of success in that it brushes off loose uh, uh, oxide off the drum. Uh, so it can be quite useful in that respect, but uh, I always prefer to use it wet. So a little bit of a little spray of isopropyl alcohol onto there just to wet it like that. And then the trick with this is not to move the stick about is basically to hold the stick against the drum and then rotate the drum. So the only movement of the head against the chamois is in that horizontal movement of where the the head itself passes the drum so you might need to put a bit of pressure on it and do it like that and then just go along to the next one go along to the next one and on this one because it's a stereo um, vhs stereo hi-fi stereo machine um, it's got four heads yeah it says vhs hi-fi on the front Sometimes you can get eight heads if it's long play SP heads. So basically you just hold the uh, chamois still, never go up and down. That's a no-no because you'll, you can snap the head off the drum and then you've got to find yourself a new head drum. 
Now, when it's above the when it's above the head, so long as you're not going to touch the head, you can scrub the actual drum with isopropyl that this way. And there you can see that mark is coming off there. So, so long as you're not near the actual head when you're moving the stick, you should be okay. And then you've got a little bit there as well. And then also remember we found some on the bottom of the drum. So you may need to just keep control of the head as you're cleaning the bottom drum to move the, the actual heads themselves. The actual, so keep control of the, the upper drum. And of course I'm doing all this and you can't see because I've got a big hand in the way. So basically this is what we're doing here. And it may take a it may take a couple of goes to do this and also the little lip at the bottom there because that's where the tape aligns on the bottom drum because it's helical scanning and if that is yeah so now we can actually see see that black streak across there that's the oxide that we've got off of the actual drum so again, just making sure we don't do it. And if you're using isopropyl alcohol, it dries in its own good time. So, so I'm moving above the the head, and where I do where the head is, I hold the chamois stick still, and I rotate the drum like that. It can say, take, as I say, it can take a couple of goes to get the heads clean. Uh, you can use a cleaning tape. You can buy VHS cleaning tapes. They tend to be more abrasive than anything else. And if you get a lump of oxide stuck on the drum there, you may need to give it a good hard scrub to get that off. But as I say, when, it's, when you've cleaned it, just spin the drum round finger on the top and just to you know if there's any big globs of uh, liquid on there that will spin it off like a, a spin dryer in a washing machine yeah and whilst you're whilst you're at it you might as well clean the uh, tracking head and audio linear audio head which is that part there again being careful where you touch Because anywhere where the tape rides, there's potential for oxide to come off. The tape guides themselves here could also be cleaned off. And the erase head there as well. So having done all that, like I say, do let it dry of its own accord. I just saw a smudge of something on there. Yeah, it's still... Still a smudge of oxide just on there. You can just see it. So let's just get it in the light so I can give it a hard rub. Yeah, I think we got it. Yeah. And you can obviously, if you want, just hold the there just to shine it up. So hopefully, as that last stick has just about had its day, hopefully that should now um, give us a picture. Now what I always used to do uh, when I was doing this four times, I used to have a cassette with the tapes removed. So just a, a blank cassette but with no tape in it. So you could put it in and it would go into playback even though there was no tape in it. Uh, and it would allow you the mechanism to move freely without any tape in it. But um, I'm pretty certain if I just feel that now, I'm pretty certain that's now clean. So if you put the tape in and the head drum is still damp 
what will happen is as soon as the tape comes into contact with it the, the head drum will just grab it and pull it all out and it will just the head will just spin until it stops with tape wrapped around it and then you've really got to do some dramatic cleaning hopefully i've let it dry enough there you go well, it's gone into play but we've still got no picture no sound there's a switch on the back here for video output so it's not that now, I know this is a known good tape so Either the heads are completely knackered, or there's another fault. So what am I going to do to fault find on this now? Well, the next thing would be to try and identify the video circuitry on here to see if we're getting any kind of video into the output side of things um, that could be at fault it could be that there is uh, a problem with that i just want to double check that the dvd player is actually working so i'm just going to pause the video for a minute uh, and go and get a known good dvd and then select the dvd vcr selector on the front and that gives us um, the DVD menu. So let's just try our matrix. Let's see what happens on the DVD menu that says now loading. Aha! Uh -huh. And it is playing the DVD. So we can forget the DVD side of things. Press this button to go back to VCR. So we've definitely still got a VCR problem, not a DVD problem. That's good to know. So all I did on the VCR was press play and it seems to have gone into reverse. So if I press pause, it's pausing, go back to play and it starts to play and then goes blank. Fast forward, that's playing. Pause, pauses, not particularly brilliant pause, um, ah, I know what we need to do, we need to adjust the tracking, don't we, do, 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 where's the tracking control on this, is there a little, tracking control, tracking control, Yeah, see, it's funny, it's, it's like it's... Huh. It's playing in terms of two speed. This is going forwards now. Uh, 
that seems to be the tracking control which is what I thought the channel up and down in playback is tracking control so when it's in fast forward it's playing OK Hmm. It's definitely playing too fast. And as soon as it goes into play, it's still playing, but the tape counter isn't going up anymore. It's still showing. Up. Why don't I show you? You can see what I'm talking about then. Whether you can or not. Right. So you can see that the indicator shows that it's playing. And if I press play again, I can see the image on the screen. And the tape counter is now moving up at times two speed. So let's just put that back. I press skip search on here. And you see it's skipping forward. We get a picture. Let's just see if there's any sound. Briefly. No, no sound briefly. Sound is definitely turned up. So, where do we go from here? It's interesting if I bring up the uh, on screen display. You can see that in fast forward it's playing and the take counter is going up. But as soon as I press play, the take counter stops, playback stops, even though the tape is still turned, tape is still moving. If I go to search, take counter hasn't hasn't advanced even though the tape has advanced. It's like it's trying to track but can't. Aha. Uh -huh. If somebody's tried to adjust the tracking on this. The manual. Right, I'm going to stop that there because I think I know what the problem is. I think it's a mechanical position on the deck. So I'm just going to play around a little bit. Mr. Horace, task for yesterday. Well, how about that? Basically, what the problem with this was that uh, probably that the heads were actually dirty, but somebody had been in there with a screwdriver adjusting the audio tracking head and it was just weird that it was coming and going tracking at 
speed whereas it wasn't at, in playback and that could be attributed to the tape moving slightly faster and therefore riding up and down the head drum oh, the, sorry the actual um, tracking control head so um, just because look, looking at it and I could see the actual tape uh, let me just see if I can show you on here right at the bottom of the actual tape head you can actually just see down here there just the very bottom edge of the actual drum uh, head itself on the and the tape position for it so perhaps bring the brightness up you might make it there you go so just underneath just the at the bottom there you can just see the tape well when i was looking at this earlier that was up a lot more there was a bit more of the head showing than uh, it was and the head itself has got three screws that adjust it and you've got two for the azimuth those two and this one here is like a tilt control so what that does is that tilts the head forwards and backwards as, and there's azimuth is like that uh, and the head is tilted forward and backwards and that was um, that screw was quite high up so the head was actually uh, leaning back and so of course the tape was riding up and I can actually show you if I just maladjust this now I know exactly where the position is if I tilt it back there it goes there's the fault if I turn it back to the position I had it in, it's just there, hopefully. And now we're back in to playback. And that's basically what it was. Now, I say it could be that somebody's maladjusted this, but none of these screws are locked in place. When I adjust these, normally when I set these up and gone through a proper tracking setup procedure, I lock them either with a Loctite glue or I put um, nail varnish, which does the job just as well and just stops it coming loose. So I'm pretty sure that that's about right. But uh, what I want to do is to um, find the service manual for this, which I'm pretty sure I can get and then look at the adjustments put an oscilloscope on the adjustment test point so that i can get the waveform for the tracking signal just right at the right setting um, and that should fix it permanently so uh, as it's late in the day i'm going to stop there and uh, hopefully get to that sometime tomorrow Right, well, I've done uh, a little bit of research. It's uh, more than the next day uh, searching for this uh, circuit diagram, etc. And uh, working my way around this uh, sharp VCR. You'll remember from uh, uh, in the video just a few moments ago, we were concerned with setting up the audio control track head. Um, and basically what I needed to do was to find uh, a videotape with a good audio linear audio because this is a hi-fi machine so the hi-fi stereo sound is recorded in in between the audio track uh, the video tracks uh, helically but there's also a linear mono track um, that runs along the the uh, the tape um, and the uh, the setup for the head is usually adjusting for the uh, the linear audio maximum output haven't got a test tape with linear audio with a test tone on it. I've got music and so on, but you can't really judge properly. So uh, basically what I've done is uh, having found the uh, circuit diagram, uh, which I'll show on here, this is IC701, which is the main uh, system controller, the deck controller. Coming into here is the control track from the uh, linear part of the tape. And we can actually see that on this test point test point four here um, which is it says playback control out so test point four there is that control track and uh, that particular position um, is here on the uh, actual PCB uh, just down the side here 
there is a test point and I've just hooked a little um, wire onto it and connected my oscilloscope onto it. So we will have a look at that control track and then I'll show you um, what we do when we make an adjustment to this control head because what's obviously happened, as I've mentioned before, somebody's been in here and tweaked these uh, screws, which has affected that. So let me get the oscilloscope up so that you can see that working. Right, so um, I've got the uh, camera pointed, my spare camera, at the uh, oscilloscope, and you should be able to see that. The flickering is because of obviously there is a strobing between the camera shutter and the display. The display looks solid to me, but it's it looks like it's blinking in and out. So what we really uh, need to uh, concentrate on is the height of the uh, amplitude of the signal. So as I make adjustments to this, um, the picture, I can't show you the picture as well because I've got another camera uh, to point at the uh, thing and I can't do a capture of the video at the moment because my video capture device is not working. So we have uh, two adjustments that we can make to this uh, head. We've got the azimuth, which is this one, and basically what that does is that tilts the head sideways against the tape. So the tape is running along here, like so, and uh, I get myself in the picture. So the tape is running like that, so we're looking at the azimuth of the head against the tape. And the second one is, I can't remember if it's, the Z is up and down, so we're not bothered about that at the moment because we know that that's about right. Um, what we're looking at is a tilt, so the head tilting forwards and backwards. So basically what we've got to do is to make uh, a, an adjustment so we get the balance of all of those to get the head right. Um, and looking in the manual, if I show you the bit of the manual, um, it's basically saying look for this signal and adjust for the maximum height. So we're not doing anything that's not specified in the service manual. So the first thing I always want, to, always try to do is make sure I get the azimuth right. So if we, uh, I've pretty got this right at the moment, so I know that uh, what, what I'm looking for. So if I maladjust this, so you can see, if I tilt the azimuth down, you can see the height, the amplitude uh, drops down because the, the peak of the signal is, is dropping. Um, on, the cat, on the actual uh, screen, the, the picture has disappeared because we've lost sync. So we adjust that back, like so. And then you adjust it and take it through the, the maximum. And you should be able to see that getting up there. And then you should be able to see it dropping down again. Yeah, so it's going down again now. You can hear that possibly that the uh, head drum is hunting because it's losing tracking. So just adjust that again. Wait a little second for it to stabilize because it's got automatic tracking so it will be uh, making adjustments by itself. Then just adjust it again a little bit of a peak and it should come up to about there I think. And if we take it a little bit too far it will drop down again. Yeah, So we come back a little bit there and that's about the peak we can get it at. Leave that running for just a few seconds and then just press the two channel up and down buttons on the video, whatever it is that instigates auto tracking. So press that to that, you'll see something appear on the screen like a little flashing in symbol or uh, whatever to show it's tracking. So that's now peaked and adjusted for uh, normal tracking. You can take the tracking out either side. So if I do it manually and take it out, you should see that signal uh, not change. Yeah, so we've gone through the whole tracking range, one side to the other. So that signal shouldn't change. If it does change, then you haven't got it quite right, uh, and it's it's still trying to adjust the head. But so pressing both buttons will do auto tracking. I can see on the on the screen it's flashing like that, showing it's doing the auto tracking, and now it's stable. Now the other adjustment is the tilt adjustment, uh, which is the one at the back. So this tilts the head like so against the tape. And again, we can adjust this um, for maximum amplitude. So if we screw it down like this, this is um, tilting the head forward. You can see the amplitude falling away. Yeah. So again, you can come back up on here. You should see the picture return on your screen. 
again adjust it to the ampli maximum amplitude again and if you drop keep going through there you see it drops off so it's gone down again the head is just uh, the drum is just hunting let it settle a minute auto tracking is flashing on the screen so then just bring it back up to the peak which is about there so as far as I'm concerned this adjustment is is now done and um, we should be able to stop take the tape out which is almost like a, a reset if you like when you take the tape out so when you put the tape in it goes into playback again because it's a pre-recorded tape it should jump and lock to it straight away with minimal of hunting and that's exactly what's happened here and then we, the other thing we can do is we can test it with another tape yeah you can see that's quite a high um, um, level so I'm pretty so I'm pretty safe that that's uh, adjusted uh, correctly so the head is now adjusted correctly so I'm happy with that the next thing would be is to make sure that um, that that doesn't maladjust itself through vibration and so on um, and I was a little bit surprised when I looked at this um, mechanism to see that there was no Loctite on the adjustment screws. So um, it, it's quite possible that uh, what's happened in um, normal use is that the vibration on the mechanism has just vibrated those um, screws uh, just slightly out. So my trick to prevent those screws from uh, moving um, or being slightly maladjusted by uh, vibrations and so on is to go and raid, raid the ladies' uh, makeup box and get some uh, uh, nail varnish, um, or you can go and buy some, it's up to you, um, and just basically put a little drop of nail varnish onto the actual screw, so it flows over the screw and onto the metal work, do again on the tilt adjustment screw, wipe it around the actual thread on there, nice blob like so, and then once that's set that should be locked in position and uh, the machine should work perfectly from then on so um, so far so good um, we know that the um, tape deck is now working perfectly uh, we just need to make sure that the um, DVD side of things work okay so we're going to move on for that next right uh, put a, a dvd into it and uh, worked through a couple of the menu selections and as you can see here i'll just pause it for a moment uh, the uh, on the tv screen there let's go back to play uh, you can see that it's working i won't uh, put the sound on because um, it's a film with a lot of bad language <laughs> it's showing that it's uh, it's playing back and it's actually playing back uh, the the disc that was uh, in the uh, machine uh, when the customer sent it so it's a it's a, a not a pre-recorded disc it's a record a disc that they've recorded themselves so uh, I'm quite happy with this and um, it's now doing everything it's supposed to do and I'm happy to send it back to the customer so thanks very much for watching hope you've enjoyed this uh, video into um, the um, VCR mechanism which uh, is quite an old thing now uh, something that I'm very familiar with but a lot of people who may be coming across these older machines who want to get them working um, they're not that difficult um, but you don't sort of you have to just sort of take care with it and adjust it as necessary but not um, just go in twiddling and, and adjusting 
doing whatever. You need to have some test equipment, an oscilloscope, um, test meter and whatever, and hopefully uh, you can get hold of a service manual. There, a lot of them are readily available and um, uh, there's a couple of websites that you can go to to find manuals. Some of them you have to pay for and some of them you have to be a little bit careful of. They'll say that they've got the manual but they haven't. But anyway, that's a, that's a whole different story. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Cheerio.